saw in our, our GIF situation mm -hmm. that Cryomancer now has a command drive. Is this the truth? That GIF was about a second long. How would you figure that out? Well, everyone on... I didn't actually see a grab. Oh, no, it, it is. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. A lot of people think they know exactly what happens and mm -hmm. why he's now the best character in the game. Right. Yes. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people saw those GIFs and they knew exactly how what all the changes were. Okay. So now in Cryomancer, if you go to do the uh, the string you had before it went to grab, it'll do the same one as the other variations. And the grab that used to be in there is actually now a standalone special move. And from there, you can go into the other special. So if you have bar, um, you can go and you can take some combos. Overall, that move does less damage by itself, so it's not super damaging, but it's just a matter of being able to mix in that grab with the stuff makes the Cryomancer his most offensive variation, which which is what it, what it was always intended to be. Um, it, and it's got a few like uh, tick throw setups and stuff in there. So it's generally meant to be Cryomancer's the getting your face of zero, whereas the like Unbreakables you run away with the clone. Um, sort of differentiates the two, and it gives reason to play the other two variations. And to complement that, his forward one string has also been changed. Yeah, it's a little quicker. Um, so it's, so it's, still, it's a little quicker of like a, a faster mid. Um, to use the train, um, and then from, from the forward one, two, you can actually take it off of that. And it's down one and uh, down three, you've gotten a little better, too. Awesome. And uh, in Unbreakable, the parry has now had a, a significant recovery buff. It now recovers a lot faster, especially the EX1. Yeah, the X1 covers, um, um, I believe it was, only like, it was only like five frames of recovery afterwards, so it's actually very hard to punish that one. Yeah. And the same thing with the regular one, so you can sort of just throw out the parry now a lot more often. And, and, um, and because of um, uh, changes with armor, when he has the aura up, he still keeps the enhanced slide having armor and it still ends up being a launcher. So it's one of the few examples in the game where there still is an armored launcher, but it's, it's in uh, Unbreakable Sub-Zero and it's only when it's the aura up. And I think that's a good example of what Ed was saying, where uh, you know, Paula wanted to be careful about buffing some of the mid-tier or the lesser-used characters because when you bring the top tier down or when you change the mechanics of the game, what used to be average becomes exceptional. So Sub-Zero, when he had the buff up, the slide launching you, that was kind of a neat trick before. It was kind of a fun gimmick. That is now one of the only armored launchers in the game. So that's like a, what, 10-frame or 9-frame armored launcher. So that's now one of the best armor moves in the game. Not because we changed it, but because we left it the same. Yeah. So that's like a key example of that. Okay. I got a, I got a friend named Tan that and no matter what we tweet, he will respond, buff unbreakable. It could be like, hey, have a great day. Mm -hmm. Hey, buff unbreakable. So now he actually, we, we've got some good changes in there for him as well. In my opinion, whiffed counter, the EX counter, is now a legit strategy that I would use in <laughs> tournament if I played Sub-Zero. I would do it. Awesome. Speaking of somebody you did play in tournament. <laughs> uh, Katana? Her back two is sped up to be 18 frames instead of 25. It still only does a little damage and knocks you down, so it's you know it's not the greatest overhead in the world, but it's probably unreactable now, so that's a really nice buff for her. Uh, off her float, she can do angle jump in, like she can do forward, jump in, punch, and back, which is kind of the same thing we did for Shinnok, and uh, someone else got that. Kenshi. Kenshi. Kenshi, right. So that puts it in line with that. Um, her throat slit EX is now actually safe on block, now it's more pushback a lot of pushback. I think it's minus nine or something like that now. So um, it's kind of a, a low risk, low reward armor move. Um, another change is there's more pushback on this, so it's better as a zoning tool. And her fans do 1% more damage. But then the big thing is uh, she can no longer combo off her EX right and fan normally. She can't just do a special move. She can only do an EX move. So we've added an EX air fan and an EX float. The Princess Flutter. And that'll let her use it. So the idea is, she's one of the few characters in the game that will have an armored launcher, but she has to use two bars to do it. So she has new moves. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Her new, sort and, of. And, and those two enhanced moves only come out out of the float. So they're not moves you do generally. Right. Just like from, the, from, the, uh, from the uppercut, you can then go into the enhanced float or the enhanced uh, air fan toss. So that's cool. big. Yeah, it's a big deal, because that's exactly what I was just saying, where that's now exceptional. Even though she has to use bars, that's still a great, great defensive tool. So her zoning is a little bit better. Her footsies are a little bit better because of the range, you know, the pushback on the lift. And now her defense is better with safer armor and then the ability to use two bars to get a combo. Awesome. And uh, the, the additional damage also applies to Morphle. The Glaive Dow does uh, extra damage too. And she can do the EX Glaive from uh, the Rising Fans as well. Cool. Excellent. We want to take a quick break to handle a technical issue real quickly. We hit the starting soon, soon.